Right. Welcome to another session of our POD discussion. And we are making progress with time. Today we are looking at structs and type dev in C programming. Stripe structs, which is basically uh, what we call structures in C. What we call structures in C. So that is what we are looking at. And I have always maintained a stand that anytime at all when you hear about when you hear about a particular concept in a programming language the first four or five questions you should be asking yourself is one what sorry what it is the next question should be why why do why do you need it why do you need this okay now you should also be looking at when are you supposed to be using it and then finally look at how to use it okay so in this session in fact today's period our focus is in understanding the concept okay hopefully tomorrow we will delve into the practical part but today we are looking at understanding the concept i believe that when we fully understand it it becomes easy for us to practice it that is why israel we dedicate a pod for the understanding part before we bring in the practical okay so please let's do what to die. We are going to discuss today. So essentially, try and gather answers for these questions. Once you are okay with them, then you'll be good to go. So now, what are structs? That's what we'll begin with. What are structs? I mentioned that they are actually structures in C. So if you ever hear structures in C and it is an example of a data structure okay a data structure in c but the moment we are mentioning data structure one thing that comes into mind which we have dealt with so far is data types so we we have learned about data types and we've learned examples in c we've talked about the use of integers, we've talked about floats, doubles, and the rest. Okay, so those are the data types that we know of. Now, when we talk about data structures, data structures, we are looking at how can we store this data? Anytime we talk about data structure but again we are also interested more in how do we store it such that okay so very important we always like let's say you are going to build a library right or even a store or a normal store usually you are asking yourself what's the best arrangement In front of all, easily assess what they are looking for. Okay. See, when you enter a pharmacy, usually we have some ways to arrange medications in a pharmacy. Sometimes you may decide, oh, let's arrange the medication according to the conditions they are used to treat. So the data structure that we are choosing, that we are going to arrange them in the condition they are used to treat. let's say a diabetic medication you know exactly where to go and the other way that you can also decide to arrange those medications is saying okay let's arrange them in alphabetical order then if somebody comes and say i'm looking for you know that okay let me go to people and go and get the medicine so that is exactly what we think about when we are thinking about data structures 
how do we arrange or put the data that we have in order such that anytime we need to have access to it, anytime that we need to add new things to it, anytime we need to remove something to it, we can easily do that without any hurdles. So that is the essence. Then in C, we have this tract as one of the data structures that we should be interested in. Okay. But before we talk specifically about it, let's look at what we already know and try and connect it to why we need to know structs. Basically, we have talked about the first thing that we talked about was variables, which I believe now we are all variables. Basically, with variables, we realize that if I have a data, if I have a data, say my name, okay, and I want to store it so that I can use my name in the program that I'm building, what do I do? I can define a variable where a variable is just a I mean, let's see if I say, let me, let me, sorry, let's call it S. Let me actually do this. Or name. Okay. We can define a variable called name and we say this is equal to this. This means that anywhere inside your program, instead of going ahead to write this long name, which you may forget. You can now represent it with just the variable name, which is name, okay? Quite easy to do that. And it makes writing a program easy. But one challenge that we faced was that this container called variable can contain only one item at a time. If you ever want multiple items, you rather have to create more of the containers in this case, more of the variables. Otherwise, you have to replace the value that a particular container is containing with another value. So if now I decided to say, change the name, I no longer want this particular name, I want to put Anthony's name there, okay? Then I can go and update that container, which is a variable and put it but what if I was interested in having both my name and the name, uh, Anthony's name, okay? And what if there are lots more people? Let's assume I wanted to keep the names of everyone on today's session. How was I going to do that? If I need to call out variables for each of them, that is going to be a problem. There's a lot of us here. And how will I even keep track of each of these? So because of that, we came to learn something that will help us solve the problem, and it's called Aries. So we learned about Aries, and basically we said Aries are just collection. So we have a collection of these. So in essence, we could say that an Aries is just a collection of variables. So instead of declaring just one variable, we have an array that will collect all those ones. Or the best way was to say it will say a collection of data. Okay, so I could put all of us inside just one container called an array. And at any point in time in my program, I can use that variable. The array also has a name. So now the array is a variable, except that it contains multiple data. So when we look at variable in its true sense, it contains just one data. But when we say an array, it contains multiple data. So anytime that I want to access any of the information that I have stored in the array, I just need to apply the notation that we have learned about using the index as the sum to get what. So that is where we started from, and that is 
how we are progressing. Then the challenge with arrays that we realize is that arrays can only contain data of the same type. So if I was just interested in our names, I could put all of our names in an array. However, maybe I'm not just interested in only our names, but rather I want our emails as well. How will I be able to create or store our name? So someone may suggest, okay, then one way we can do it is let's create names and array for names, okay, and assign values to it. Then let's create another array for emails. Then we'll assign our emails to it. But you, when you look at it critically, you see that it isn't the most efficient method to do this. Because I want to easily associate your name with your email. What if I'm not just interested in the also want to know your github username i want to know your contact i want to know your address are we going to keep creating arrays for each of these and put it in there how do we correspond the values to each of them that is a problem so how then do we solve that problem that is where the concept of drugs comes in that's when the concept of structs comes in the picture. So basically, structs are not any different from like our arrays from our variables. It's still a container. Okay? It's still a container, just like the variable is a container, just like the array is a container. But the question is, what can it contain? Arrays. In the case of the variable, we said it can contain only one element at a time. Then we said for arrays, arrays can contain multiple elements at the same time. But so in arrays, even though they can contain multiple elements at the same time, there is a but. And the but there is that they should contain data or elements of the same data. So you remember that when I mentioned data structures i also mentioned data types to draw your attention to them but if you create an array for integers the array can contain just integers then with the example i gave let's say your contact was also supposed to be part so now i'm interested in getting everyone that is happening right now your name i want your email i want your contacts I want your GitHub username, okay? And maybe let's let's add your age, okay? So this, from here, you realize that age is going to be an integer, right? Name is going to be a character pointer or string. This can also be a string for that matter. This contact is going to be an integer. You could store it as a string anyway, but in this our case, I want to say it's an integer. Then your get user name will also be a string. So this way. Right. Now I want to store all of this, but I want them to have that association so that just by calling one thing, I can have access to each of these for each of you. So if it is myself, let's say my name, Obed, okay? I can have Obed's age, I can have his name, I can have his email, I can have his contact and his GitHub username. But unfortunately, this cannot be done with an array because we said that arrays need to have or contain data of the same type. Once we have character pointers and integers, we can put them in the same arrays. So extract on the other hand is still a container, but this container allows us to solve this problem. 
That means that this container of extract allows us to store data of different types. So we can have an integer in there, we can have a character pointer in there, we can have a character, we could have a float, we could have a double in the same struct. I hope it makes sense. So this is where we came from. We've actually been building on what we have been learning, that it isn't any different from what we already know, except that the implementation may have some bit of difference, but I want you to appreciate exactly what is in there. So essentially all that we are trying to do with variables, with arrays, with tracks, is that we want to easily have access to data that we are going to be using. Because if you're building a program, essentially your program is about manipulating data in one way or the other, okay? Almost every program that you are going to build in one way or the other is going to be manipulating data. Either you're storing the data, you're retrieving the data, you're deleting, you're inserting, all that kind of stuff you're updating and the rest. It is essentially some form of data that we are going to be working with. It is, if it is just some small number of data, we could go with an, a, a variable. If it is, uh, to store data of several different types, then, what extract is then let's get a bit practical with extracts so the first thing that you always do with extracts is that okay let me mention this when you are creating a extract in uh, how do you call it in c or a structure in a programming language, what you are saying like a new data type. Okay, so the first thing that we do is that we come up with a template for our stats. You see how when we came, we're told that oh, for a string to have a string, you need to have something of this nature. Okay, and say name or you need to have something of this nature, name this. That's what we're told, okay? Assuming that this was not done, you would have created your own thing, your own representation, okay? So what is actually happening is that we want something to contain multiple data, but it's not available in C. Like it didn't come with a programming language itself. So we have to come up with our own definition of it. How should it look like? The structure that we want to use to be storing the data, how should it look like? So the first thing that you are going to do is to create a template for it. And basically the template is like this. Struct, then the name that you are going to give the struct, we call it the struct tag or structure tag, okay? So you are supposed to give it a name that can easily be used to identify it. Just like we have integer. When you write integer, you know what an integer is because when you came, they told you what integers are, okay? If I write a double, you know what a double is. So essentially, when I write struct, Structure tag. The structure type could be anything. You can call it anything that you want, depending on what you are writing. But you should always aim at giving it a name that makes sense or could easily be understood and not mistaken for other things. It is recommended. It's not compulsory, but it's recommended to do so. Then, after you have done that, you are going to define the content of this tract that you are creating. And we have learned that a tract allows us to have multiple data types in there. So we can have an integer in here. We could have 
a character pointer in here. We have another integer in here, and as many data types as we want. Then, these integers that we are talking about could be assigned their names as normal variables that we already know of. Okay, so say this is name and say this is contact. Just like, just like the normal variables that we are aware of already. The, so we call this, if, if you remember, let me go back to an array. If I created an array like this, why is my pen misbehaving? If I created an array like this and said, this is, uh, say, one, two, three, okay. Say this, one, two, three. Those are the members of my array. I've even said it. <laughs> These are the members, okay? So each item that you find within an array can be referred to as a what? A member, and I've explained this during our array discussions. So if this is your first time here, note that we have done previous sessions, discussed previous topics, which we have already published to YouTube. So each item in the array is a member of the array. At the same time, we can call it an element of the array element of the array so when you come in here each of these is considered a member so it's not any different because ideally i could actually have just stored integers in here it'll be converted into an array because an array can store data of the same type okay so basically it is similar there values or the items that you are going to pass to this your struct is known as a member or an element of it. Therefore, this particular variable name that you are using, where we are calling this name, we are calling this contact and age, we can say these are I hope we are getting somewhere. The name that you give here is called a structure tag. And in fact, that is not even compulsory. It's an optional thing that you put there, but it makes working with it easier. So I recommend that you always bring your structure tag, the name that you want to use. These are member variables, okay? Let's move on. I think I need to reduce this. Okay, so we've talked about, this is still defining the template. So after I've done this, essentially what I've said is after creating a struct, the members in this struct are of the type integer, character, pointer, and integer. Okay, and I've called this age, I've called this name, and of course, this contact. Remember that this is just a what? A template. So by doing this, doesn't necessarily mean that you have created a structure. You have only, let me use my term so, like you have only created a template that any structure that you create in future should follow by a structure of a particular type. So let's go ahead and say, this is like a uh, user account, okay? So we are calling this struct user account. So in this specific case, the user account that I'm writing here is your structure tag, okay? And in the user account, we're interested in having your age, your name, 
you're also interested in your GitHub username. We are also interested in your contacts and your email. Sorry, I needed to press. Ooh. Okay. In contact. Doctor. Yeah. Yes, not much. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. <clears throat> okay, somebody just asked me a funny question. I beg, just explain. In is here. I beg, just explain. I beg. Um, he said, why do we have the asterisk before the name? And uh, that you notice that you have the asterisk in only cha. So why do we have that? So just can you explain that for uh, this dear? Okay. So basically, I think we, we have <clears throat> talked about this when we're talking about strings. Okay. So this is just a pointer identifier. The asterisk here tells us that it's a pointer to something. Okay. And we have already learned that character pointer is essentially to like when we are working with a string. Okay. I don't think I should really. So there are two ways that you present your strength. You can write it this way. This is telling you that it is a pointer to a character. And you know, once we have a pointer, if every string, for instance, let me say my name, so Obed. Obed is a string, but essentially what Obed is, is a number of characters that are being stored together. So essentially it is an array, okay? It's an array of the same data type that we have here. And we can always assign a pointer to the first item. Once we have a pointer to the first item, with this pointer, we'll be able to assess the rest. So it is acceptable in C to declare your string in this way. The other way that you could have declared it, which I've already shown, is writing name and putting this before it. So you can use either the array notation or you use the pointer notation, as I've shown here. If you really want to understand it very well, then you probably have to check our lesson on strings. Uh, thank you. She, yeah, I, think she, I think she gets it now. <laughs> OK. All right. OK. So what I've been trying to do is creating a structure, a structure user account. Please pay attention. When we use the words, sometimes we are not careful. You just get confused by the term, terms or the words that we are being used to explain some of these things. This that I have done is just a template. That okay, going for it, anybody at all who wants to create a structure of the type user account. So this is like a new data type that I have created. This is a user defined data type. So just as you had what integer, you had floats, you had a concept of arrays that you know about, you have strings that you know about. Now, I, on my own, have defined my own data type. And my own data type is called tracks user accounts. Please, this part is something you need to understand before we proceed. What I have done there right now is not me defining the body of a structure. I've, what I have done is I've created a template for a new data type that you can use anywhere you want. But when you use this new data type to declare something, then you should know how it works. 
So we have learned about O. I, when, when you have an integer, an integer is basically a number without the decimal point or a whole number that we can use. A float is a number that has a decimal point. So in this same way, you should go ahead and say extract user account is something that contains an integer or variable age, a character string, a string of a name, a name, a string of variable, GitHub username, like it tells you something. So anywhere in your program where you see struct user accounts, you know that this data type is of this nature. So the nature is what I have shown here. That's just the nature of the data type that I've created. Please don't forget that. This is not me creating a structure. This is me creating a template or defining a new data type for you that you can use. Okay, so it's the same way we do these things, the same way. Now, the next important thing to make this sync let's look at it, is for us to see how do we declare. So oh, when we're dealing with variables, we learned how to declare variables. When we're dealing with functions, how to declare functions and there is. So now let's just focus on a variable. If I want to declare an integer variable called um, score, if I want to define an integer variable called score, you would bear me witness that I'll write integer what score? I hope we agree to that. This is how I declare a variable. Then I'll ask you, what is the variable that has been declared here? And you said, oh, it's a score. What type is this particular variable score? You say, oh, it is an integer. That means this is a container that contains an integer. We all understand that. Now what I have also done is I've created a new data type called struct user account. So I can create a new variable or declare this particular data type that I have called. So maybe this data type is called ALS students. Now, if I ask you, what is the variable name in this case? You know that it is what? ALS underscore student, or let's just say ALS student. That's a variable name. Then I can ask you another question. What data type is ALS student? Then you come and tell me it is not tracks, it is tracked user accounts. That is the data type. The only thing is that to create a new data type as we have done in this way, struct. So this whole thing is like the new data type that I've created. So I've created this is the uh, structure variable. Okay, this is a structure variable. This is what an integer variable. But this particular one, when I want to become specific, I ask you, what type of data is ALS student containing? Because we appreciate the fact that a variable is just essentially a container to contain something. But what type of data is ALS student containing? Then you come and tell me that ALS student contain struct user account. Then now I'm interested or curious about what is struct user account. And when you come up here, you will see that we have written the template for struct user account up there. This means that this particular container that I've created contain data of this type. So ALS students will contain, inside it you will find an integer, you will find two strings, in fact, three strings and two integers inside that new data type that I've created. So let me go back to the terminologies again and explain them. What we have seen, obviously the struct is just a keyword that we've been given, okay? And it helps us define our own data type, which is a structure. 
So struct, then the name that we pass here, I said it is what? The structure tag. That is how we call it. It's a structure tag. So in the example that I gave, the structure type would have been, what was it? User underscore accounts. Okay. Then inside it, I've told you that the items you have in there are members of the structs. Okay, so if I use a variable name like this, this is what's known as the member variable. But after I have declared, after I have declared, how did we declare? I did struct in our case, we gave the name of the tag. Okay, so that was user account. Then I declared a variable. I declare this variable so that anywhere I use this variable, we know the data type that it is containing. Okay, this particular type of variable is called the structure variable. So don't miss the two, the structure variable and the member variable. And as you know, structure variable has a lot of them. We are only saying that we are having containers of this type. So I can say hobbiting students. Okay. As another variable that I've created. It's just like me saying, oh, uh, int x and y. I've just created two into this. Okay. So Creating ALS underscore student or ALS student and Hobbiton student. I've created two variables, but what data type are they? Each of them is of the type struct user account. Very simple. So what I need to lay emphasis on is the technologies. The structure tag, the structure tag, the member variable, and the structure variable. But with regards to the structure variable, there is another way that we can declare a structure variable. And that way, we add the structure variable to the template for the structure itself. So when you are defining a structure, you start by saying, I mean, when you are creating the template, Start by saying struct, then in this our case, say user, let me use this case rather, user accounts, then we have in it, let me just aim at the name. This is the template that we have created, but right after this, before we bring our semicolon, we can bring the variable name. That's the struct variable name. So I can say ALS student. This tells me that I've declared one variable name called ALS student, and it is of the type struct user account. I could also separate them just out, just as we define variables in this way say x comma y meaning we have declared uh, integer x and integer y the same way i could use i could use this as a comma here then pass permitting students another variable. Please, I need you to understand this basis before we can get any time. So uh, let me pause here and take questions, if you have any questions. Yes, if you have any questions on what we have done so far. So far, we looked at what structs are, then how to create the template, then how to declare extract? Any questions on that? 
es If there are no questions, then I guess everyone uh, understands what we have done so far. So we can move on. Good. When we are dealing with variables like this, the next thing that we are interested in after declaring it is what initializing the variable, right? The question is, how do we initialize the variable? We can go ahead and say x is equal to 20. And we say y is equal to 10. That is how we initialize this normal variable. So the question is, how do we initialize the new data type that we have created? How do we initialize it? So basically, ALS student is the name of the variable that we have created, at least one of the variables that we have created. Okay, ALS student is one of them. So when we call this, we can assign a value to it. We can assign a value to this, but what value will be assigned? We need to know what it contains because it contains multiple data so we should be able to okay in this particular example it contains two data okay it contains this and that so usually you can just even go ahead and say okay, we initialize it to zero you can do this and that is acceptable to so initialize it to zero If you don't want to do that, then you have to tell us the specific value to what. So we have age and we have name. So I can do ALS student. Then we use the dots notation, which says that, the, like we call it the member operator. So this is member of, then we assign it a value. Then we do ALS students, then name is equal to whatever value that we give it. When we had Aries, to initialize the value of Aries, let's say we have an Ari, A R R. We initialize it this way, saying one, two, three. So this notation is similar to this. But we could also do this and say the zero index is one, say one index is, or in the one is two, then in the three is three. Okay, so that is similar to what you are doing here. very similar so in fact we haven't done anything strange except for the introduction of a template yeah i do you have a question Harina, do you have a question Otherwise, you'd have to uh, mute. Okay, let me. All right, so that is basically what we need to do. Um, let's see. Now, the same way that we've been able to, the same way that we've been able to assign the values to it we should also be able to assess the values in the day okay so just as when we are dealing with aries example that i gave there if we have an ari 
we have an array of let's say scores okay say 80 95 72. if you want to access any of these arrays uh, <clears throat> members here you can simply use the index as we used when we we're initializing it. You can use the index and say array index one. Then you should know that when you are using index, this is zero, one, or two. So anytime you want to assess this, you know that it is at index zero. If you want to assess this, you know that it is at index one. And if you want to assess this, you know that it is at index two. In the same way, after we have created our structure, if let's say we have assigned values to it. So the example that we are working with, say, ooh, let me change the value, uh, the structure to, let's, let's do this, direction. Let's create a structure direction. This structure has the tag direction and it's going to take a float of sorry, sorry for this. Uh, I don't know why I brought it there. Okay, a float of oh. A float of longitude, then another float of latitude. Then we end our structure here. That's the, uh, the template that we are going to use. Okay, so now, if I want to say the direction to my home. So I can come and define a variable, a variable of type stack direction. Okay, then give it a name to so say, home, okay, let me call it home. Now I've given this variable what? a name. So I can go ahead and use this variable. Everywhere I use it, the computer understands the data type that it is expecting. It's expecting what? Extract direction data type. And that extract direction should look like this. It has two members, either both of them are floats. So I can go ahead and assess it by using home dot. The first one is what longitude. So if I want to assess the data that has been passed here, this is how I'm going to do it. For this first time, I'm now assigning a value to it. So can go ahead and say, well, what should it even be? Let me just use 2.71. I don't know, I don't know how you're supposed to get it. Let's just use 2.71 and say home dot latitude. Home dot latitude is equal to say 3.4. Okay. So now, anywhere inside my program, when I use this, the computer understands exactly what I'm doing. And I can go ahead and create another uh, struct direction variable and say struct direction. Struct direction work. So now I'm creating a variable that will represent my work address or work 
uh, direction. Then I can go ahead and also assign the values work dot longitude. So in fact, once you have declared this work with this particular notation, you can use it how just as you use any variable at all. You just know exactly what is in there. When you have mentioned work dot this, the computer understands that this work that you have created this work itself is of data type struct direction. That is the data type for this. Okay. Then inside struct direction, there is a member called longitude. There is a member called longitude. And this member longitude is of the type floats. So any value that you assign has to be of the type floats. Hope it's making sense. So we can create as many, as many types as we want. But always remember that this is the new data type that you have created. I think the reason why people easily get confused is the fact that a lot of references that you see when they do this, they go ahead and say, let's assume it's the same thing I was doing. Struct direction. Struct direction. Then after that is after we have defined it already. Okay, so we've already defined it. Then they are coming to declare a variable and they will call another variable direction. So if you are not careful, you get confused along the line. But this is not strange. And the computer understands them. This that you have here is what? A data type. Don't forget that. This is a unique data type that only you know of. You are the only one who created it. I can't go and just use struct direction because I haven't created something like that. Only if I have the template in my program, then I can say that I can use it. So until you have that template in your program, you can't use it. But so far as you have that template inside your program, the computer understands that this is a data type. Don't forget that. This is a data type. Whilst this is what? This is a variable. So the structure variable. So I could go this way, then I can assess the various members of this direction with a dot notation. Another thing that becomes confusing is that in defining the template for this direction, let's say somebody created struct, struct direction. Struct direction. And in their definition, they have, say, character the pointer to direction. Then they close this and define another variable direction. A bit confusing. But the computer understands the role that each of these is playing. The first direction here is a what? It's a structure tag. This direction here is a what? A member variable. Then this direction here is what? is a structure variable. Why is this thing behaving like that? I think the platform is a bit slow. OK. So even though I use the word direction, 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 
the computer doesn't get confused because they are all different things all together. So if I create something like this and I start using it in my program, you're not going to wonder why do we have direction here? Why do we have direction there and direction there? Okay, so that is why we started building from somewhere to where we are gotten to. You need to identify them by what they stand for. This is a structure tag. This is what a member variable. And this is a structure variable. So now let's go ahead and use this particular struct that we have created. It means that essentially what we have done here with this one is that we have declared a variable of data type struct direction, a variable of type struct direction called direction. So essentially we have done that with the templates that we wrote here. Okay, and once we have done this, once we have done this, you know, we can use this particular structure variable to assess the members in there. So using the member operator, if I want to assign a value, I can do direction, direction, uh, direction dot direction direction dot direction oh why is this behaving like that direction dot direction is equal to then maybe i'll give it a name uh say where i am now let's say uh east legon hills okay so if you come and meet this code you may end up getting confused because you're asking yourself why direction here and why direction here. But what you need to understand is that this direction is a member inside it. The computer understands it. So far as you have this dot here, it's telling it this, anything that follows is a member of this. So this is a member of this. This is just a variable of data type struct direction, okay? So from now on, as we are reading any code and you come across the use of some of these things, you should understand why they are so, and what each of them is and how it is implemented. Any questions before we move on to another interesting thing? I hope you're understanding the concepts. Please, you need to understand them before tomorrow we start the practicals. Then you start seeing yes, the I'm giving a quick thing. Okay, sure. Yes, I thought you were going to say something. So I'm having a question here with the direction, direction. Okay, okay. Yes, uh, because he said, isn't that direction a uh, a variable of uh, direction. So I don't understand how you are assigning the value to it. Maybe it's because I didn't see the this how the struct is looking. Oh, all right. No, thanks. I got it. Okay. Good. Yes, any other question? You know, there is a concept in C that ever since we learned it, everywhere we go, it follows us there. Who can, who can mention that concept? Ever since we learned it, okay. in C. Point is, thank you. <laughs> okay. 
Find this. If, if you have MCA, you don't learn what it is. I wonder what I will see that you learned. They have been following us everywhere. So now we are interested in pointers to structures. Pointers to structures. It's not any different from all that we have been doing so far. If you remember, a pointer just does what points you in the memory location for something. It points you in the memory location for something. So here, if I have a x, this thing is worrying me. Okay, so we are saying that if we have integer x assigned to say twenty. When we run this program, this variable x is going to be stored in a particular memory location of the computer, okay? And that memory location can be identified with what we call an address. In the same way, the moment we come and say struct, direction then give it a name say home okay if we assign values to it or even after we have created this variable home there is going to be what memory space allocated to it memory space allocated to this and that is in the form of what we call an address. So if we have an address to this, note that the address is not to the template that you created. That is where some people usually get wrong. The address is not to the templates. The address is to the instance of that template. So I think this is a very important thing that we need to appreciate because even though we are not going to be dealing with pointers, I'm not talking about pointers here. I'm talking about using the template and uh, declaring a structure variable here. This concept is a similar concept to how we use objects in other programming languages, that's the object-oriented programming language. Okay, so let's appreciate how this is being done, where you create the template, okay? You create the template, then you come and instantiate the template. This is where we say you are instantiating the template. That is, you are using an instance of templates that you have created. It's similar to object-oriented programming, using the creating an object and instantiating an object and things like that. Okay. So please, and please again, don't throw it away when you are learning this, because you need it when we start learning Python, all right? And even in JavaScript too, you would also need it to be able to appreciate it. So it's good we are tackling it here. But after initiating it, or instantiating it rather, after instantiating it, now there needs to be a memory space located to it. Once there is an address to it, we can create a pointer. And this pointer will essentially store the address to this. So that is all we are doing. And let me repeat again, it doesn't store the address to the template. In fact, the address to the template wouldn't be 
required in any way. You don't need a template address. And the templates wouldn't have an address inside even your staff memory. It's going to be somewhere in the code uh, part. So the last time we learned about the memory layouts for our programs. So there is no way you should point to the template. You rather point to an instance of the template. Someone has used this template to do something. So this template is a template that gives direction. It gives you an idea of direction. And I have decided to use that template to create my home direction or direction to home or direction to my house, something like that. So now you can keep that record, the address to it, and call it any pointer that you want to call it. In the same way that you did this, you created a pointer to S. How did you create a pointer to S? So if I want to create a pointer to S, what will I do? First, I'll have to declare an integer pointer. Did you get that? To create a pointer to S, I have to declare an integer pointer. Why do I have to do that? Because X is an integer. Essentially, what creating an integer pointer will mean is that I'm creating a variable that will contain an address. And that address points me in a direction of an integer. That is why we'll go ahead and create an integer pointer. Let's call it PTX. So if that is how to create a pointer to this integer, integer variable x. Now my question is, how will I create a pointer to my home variable here? This question is to the class. Everybody, someone should unmute and tell me. They haven't engaged you enough. Unmute and tell me. If this is how, I declare an integer, a pointer to an integer. How will I declare a pointer to my home? It has yes. to be a struct direction pointer. Thank you. Struct direction pointer, then a name of the pointer. So say PT home. So this is not strange. In fact, it's not any different from the pointers that we've been doing so far. It's quite interesting. So always, before you are going to use the structure, always, you need to have declared it. You can't use a structure when you haven't declared it. The same way you can't use a variable when you haven't declared a variable. You are definitely going to get an error. So we always need to declare a variable. After declaring your variable during runtime, there's going to be assigned a, an address to it, and therefore you can go ahead and create what create a pointer to it. So let's see a new struct called scores. So let's put course okay a strat course course then it takes let's say integer values of let's say subject one or let me use the names of the subject so say english integer value of maths then character of grade. So there's a structure that we have created. I mean, a template of a structure that we have created. To be able to use this, the best thing we need is to create a template, uh, sorry, to declare a variable, a structure variable, to hold the data we are going to pass to it. So I want to have the scores for gifts. 
Then I also want the scores for favor. Okay. I want these two people their scores. In the first place, I would have to declare a variable of type struct scores. So this way I'll do struct scores, then the name of the variable. So let's pass the name as their names. So gifts. This tells you that now I've instantiated a score struct and it is called gifts. So I can always create a pointer to gifts. In the same way, I can go ahead and create one for favor. Okay. Then to make things easy, if you remember, we've learned about the importance of pointers, the importance of pointers. And that's why we need to know why we uh, we need to know pointers to structures too. Because then if this automatically when the program runs, it's going to create space in what the stack memory. I hope you remember that. If this program runs and these are instantiated, it's going to create them in the stack memory. What if we are interested in using dynamic memory or we want to do dynamic memory allocation here? We can go ahead and use these variables. We rather would need pointers to these variables. Then the other option was or the other thing, reason why we need to get to know about pointers was the fact that when we are working with functions, so if you ever want to pass one of these structures to a function, and you're going to make changes that you want to affect the actual value and not just a duplicate copy of it, then you need a pointer. Essentially, what I've said here is the reason why we need to know about pointers to structures. And it's not any different from pointers to any other thing that we've talked about so far. How you declare it is now you know that this is a new data type. So if I want to declare a pointer to this, then I can say structs scores. Then pointer name, okay, so say PTF. Then I can do one for PTG. The question then becomes, how do I assign values to these pointers? Because all that you have done here is you have declared the pointers. But how do you assign values to the pointers? So if you remember, going back to int x, if you remember going back to int s, say int s is got 10, then assigning a pointer to int x, assigning a pointer to int s, say an integer pointer or a pointer to an integer, say ptx. This is the declaration, that's the part that we have done. But then if I want to assign it to X, then I do this with the help of the address of symbol. I hope we remember that. Address of symbol. So if I have come into this point, if I have created uh, a variable of name, favor and type struct scores. Let me rewrite it here. Struct scores. The name was favor. And I created a pointer to that called this. So this is struct scores. If I want to assign values to this pointer, then I can call this pointer and say this is equal to address of what favor. 
Is it any different? No, I don't think so. Basically, what we have been doing is that now we've introduced our own data type. We've introduced our own, sorry, our own data type called structs, but every other thing remains the same. Every other thing remains the same. Now the question is, if I was able to assess, let's assume favor we, the members that we gave was, I think they were subjects to so English, there was English and there was math, then there was grade. So with the help of the name of the variable, I said that we could do favor, dot English, then we assign the score, say he scored 78 in English. Then we could do favor dot math, he scored 92 in math. Then favor dot grade, he had a grade A. I was able to assign them using this dot, okay? And I said this dot is known as the member operator. It's a very important operator. And just as I mentioned earlier, when you start object-oriented programming, in most programming language, you are going to be using this dot. So pay attention to it, dot something in order to assess what is in there okay so we're assessing the members now with the help of the pointer there i think we have to go back uh, like we have to go a step back first with this ptx is equal to that if i go ahead and print pts what am i going to get if i print pts someone should tell me what am I going to get if I print PTS? Yes. You will get the address of X. Thank you very much. So if I print PTS, I'll get address of X. What if I'm interested in the value of S? What should I do? Please, why is only one person talking? We have a lot if of you here. Yes. If you want the value at X, you will reference PTX. So you will Thank you. do a PTX, a star PTX. Thank you. So if I want the value that X contains, then I have to dereference PTX with this symbol. That's how we dereference it. In the same way, even though I've created PTF here as a pointer to this, if I want to use it and have access to the actual value and not just the address, I would have references. Okay? But you know that after dereferencing it, all that I've done is having access to this. If I need the members thereof, I have to do dots. Then which member? English or math or grade. Very important. Don't forget the basis of pointers if you are going to be using pointers. You couldn't use just PTF to come here and say PTF dot this then do whatever you want to do okay so for that matter you need to first dereference this but there is a problem when you usually do not enclose this in the bracket so recommended that you put that in a bracket to force it to dereference itself before any other thing So what have I said so far about this? 
We can use pointers to access members of tracks in the same way that we use our variable names to assess the members of the struct. And it follows a similar concept as we use pointers to assess values that variables contain. And I've already illustrated that to us. So I said that we need to dereference a pointer. Then we can use dots, the member variable. So in this case, say English. And this will bring out, or if we apply print to it, will bring out the score that Favor had for English. Okay, but this looks a bit cumbersome. So there is an easier way out where we can easily use this. So instead of first dereferencing and using the dots, we can also use the uh, the arrow notation that says that this is pointing to this member. The difference here is that I don't need to dereference this when I use this arrow. So when I use the arrow, I don't need to dereference the uh, pointer that I'm using. But without the arrow, then I would have to go ahead and dereference it and use the dot notation or the member operator to get the value in there. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So hopefully tomorrow when we start the practical session, all of these will be put to use. Now there is also arrays of structs. And if you understand arrays of integers, arrays of normal variables, then this isn't any different. It isn't any different at all. Because when I want to declare an array of integers, what do I do? I say int, then the name of the array, say goals, then I pass this in front of it. Isn't that the case? So in this uh, structure example that we are using, structures struct source wouldn't any different struct course scores struct scores mm. as we have established already is a new data type so we just need to call it like that and we need to pass the variable name so what variable name do you want to give it if i want to say students then bring this to indicate that I want an array in there. So this isn't any different at all. It isn't any different at all. And once you've been able to create something of this sort, the only thing is that in the implementation, you should remember that we access arrays with their indices. That is all you need to remember. So this will allow us to create multiple data, but of this special type. The same way it goes, this will allow us to create multiple values here of the type integer. So each of them will be an integer. In that same way, each of these that we are going to pass will be of the type struct scores. For that matter, they will all follow the template that we have created. And to access them, you still need to use the students. That's why the other board is bigger, but it's not helping. So students, if I go ahead and do students in the zero dots, then I call say English. Then I have access to that one for 
the structure at index zero. I could do the same for at index one, student at index one dot English to have access to it. So it isn't any different because if you had an integer variable, say scores as we have here, and it was assigned say 90, 80, 70. Assume these are the scores that this person had. If you want to assess this, this is in the zero, this is in this one, this is in this two. All you do is scores in the zero, and it will point you in this direction. Scores in this one will point you in this direction, and scores in this two will point you in this direction. So that is a similar thing that we are doing, except that our structure has a given template that we need to follow. And each template has a member variable that we can access. So we are doing the same thing, students at in the zero, but students at in the zero has other parameters that we need to be aware of. That is the member variables. And we can access it with the dot notation. Any questions about that? Hopefully tomorrow we'll try and take examples for each of them so that you, you get the practicality of them. The last thing I'm going to talk about, is there any questions? Let me talk about the last dates. Last dates. Type death. Type depth. It's also a very simple concept. In fact, I think it's like one of the simplest concepts and shouldn't be confused in any way. So basically, what type depth does in C programming is that it allows you to create aliases for complex stuff or what I would like to call nicknames. For complex stuff. Okay. So some of us have gotten nicknames that you usually call yourself. So you mention your long name and you say, oh, AAA, then you give your alias. So anybody who is trying to access you can use your alias to ask you. In the same way, type death allows us to rename some of the structures. Okay, so for instance, in the case where we have struct scores, realize that it's not very convenient to always be writing struct scores. What if we can abstract this and have it as just say SS? So that anywhere in my code where I write SS, the program understands that I'm making reference to struct scores. That is where the use of type dev comes in. So if we define or create a template for extracts, and extract here is say, uh, what should I use? Let, let me just say lists, okay. Say lists and it contains character C and integer X. Okay. In order to create an instance of this list, I have to mention their name and say struct list. Then I pass the name of the variable that I want to give it. So my to do list. Okay, or my to do. That is how I am calling this particular one. But instead of using struct list, I rather want something simple. So, what I can do is that I will preface when I'm defining the templates. Okay, so we are going to redefine this. I'll preface type there 
in front of tracks lists then go ahead and do the normalization of this say and x then close it but this time around i'm going to write something here and uh, i prefer to write sl so what i've done here is that everything in this code okay which is the structure template that i have defined ideally could have been assessed with struct lists as we have here okay but i've abstracted this one to sl so instead of initializing or instantiating it to struct list my to do i'll do sl my to do so when the computer sees this it will go and look for the meaning of sl and we've defined it here with a type define okay it's similar to if you are going to say create an integer pointer you usually do this okay so i could create my own i will create my own type say type dev integer pointer then i call it int p this means that anywhere in my code where you see int p, the computer should understand I mean integer pointer to something. So instead of going on to write integer pointer, then the name of the pointer say ptx, I can just write int p ptx. So just consider anytime you see type dev, you are just creating another name that you can use to call this thing. So for our structures, we have to be using struct list, okay, always. So once we append it with type dev, it means that anywhere that we see struct list, we can go ahead and use the name that we have assigned to it. Yes, so that is the concept that we are dealing with today. In summary, we have looked at structs, what they are, why we need them, and we have even compared them to what we already know, that's the variables, the arrays, the, yeah, the normal variables, the arrays, the data types. We have looked at how you can assign values to structs. We have looked at how you can declare. We have looked at how you can assess so assess the values in extracts. Then we've also looked at the concept of pointer to structs. Then we've looked at arrays of structs. Then finally, we've looked at type depth. So go we'll in tomorrow, we'll start a practical session, how we implement this in our code and we get to appreciate them very well. So hopefully you will understand the concept. Any questions up to this point before we bring the session to a close? Any questions? One, two, three. Okay, so if there are no questions, then we'll bring the session to a close here. Well, prepare yourself for the practical discussion tomorrow, God willing. I would hopefully it will be around the same time, but I would communicate in a group so that you know exactly what time we are going to do it. I'll try and bring up some questions that we can tackle using Strat and how we can implement type dev there. So thank you all for being here. Thank you. I appreciate your time and I hope to see you go willing tomorrow for the practical session. See you. Thank you. Bye bye. Hi. Bye. Bye. Go willing tomorrow.